Hey, what's up everyone? It's Alan from Black Lotus Audio, and today we're gonna to be making some kick drums inside of Vital. So inside of Ableton here, I've got Vital set up on a MIDI track, and I've also got an audio track underneath for some resampling. Um, to set this resampling up, all you have to do is take the output of the Vital channel and route it into the input of this channel, or basically just click this box and select the one that says Vital, or whatever you're routing audio from, and then be sure to arm that so that when we record, you can get a nice visual representation of your kick drum. Now, I've got a MIDI clip here playing a random note for a bar. It doesn't matter what note this is, um, because as we move into Vital, what we're gonna do after initializing our preset, we're gonna head into the Advanced tab, and we're gonna turn off note tracking. Now, with note tracking on, as we change the note that we play on the piano roll, the pitch will change, right? But if we turn note tracking off, it just plays the same pitch. And so we're gonna use that today. Now let's go ahead and change to our basic shapes and we'll use a sign, which is just all the way down on the wavetable position. And then we're gonna start dialing in the pitch of our kick drum. And this is gonna be the fundamental pitch, like the low bassy note of the kick drum. And we can use an EQ to help us fine tune this. All we have to do is play the note and we see we have a spike around 129. So if we start dropping the transposition of this, um, let's go negative 10 maybe, we can hear and kind of see that we're closer to a kick drums range. Right now we're at about 75 hertz. So I know from experience that I typically like this around negative 16 and that'll get us about negative 50 uh, hertz. And I think that sounds pretty good. So I'm gonna disable the EQ now and we're gonna start um, actually creating our kick drum. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is set our phase up. Now, this phase randomization knob will cause some intermittent clicking on the start of our waveform. So if I just play this a few times, you can hear that sometimes the clicking is a little bit louder than other times. So I'm gonna turn that down to zero. So now our phase is gonna be starting from 180, which is this zero crossing here. And that's gonna keep things nice and consistent. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the attack of envelope one down because I want things to be nice and punchy. And then we're gonna start using LFO one to modulate the level of oscillator one. So if we just drag that on there, turn the level all the way down to zero and then drag the modulation all the way up to one. That's the sound that we get, which is not very kick drum like. So let's go ahead and make a shape like this. And what this shape represents is Basically, it's the volume of our kick drum, where it starts at 100% on the transient and goes 100% uh, until the body is over, and then we have a nice tail fade out. Now, I'm gonna turn off trigger because I want this to only trigger once, so we're gonna use envelope mode. We're gonna leave the frequency at one half, and we're gonna turn off smoothing. You don't want the LFO smoothing on when you're making drums. And next, what we're gonna do is grab LFO2 and LFO2 is gonna go on to the pitch of oscillator one, and we're gonna turn that up between 70 and 80, and we're gonna just create a nice ramp down shape. And that gives us this sound, which is a bit laser-like. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn on envelope mode, and then we're gonna turn off smoothing, and I'm gonna slowly roll up through the frequencies, making it faster and faster, and we're gonna hear where our transient sounds best. So this is one half again, then a quarter, now an eighth, one sixteenth, and one thirty second. Now I think it sounds best right around one sixteenth. That sounds pretty kick drum like to me. I am gonna shorten it up just a little bit though. And that's it for LFO2. Now, this is still lacking a little bit on the transient, so I'm gonna activate the sampler and I'm gonna turn the level all the way down. Then we're gonna grab LFO3, drag it onto that level and make sure it's modulating all the way back up. And then we're gonna create a similar ramp down shape uh, to LFO2. We'll turn on envelope mode, we'll set the rate, uh, similar rate, 1 16th, and of course we'll turn off smoothing. And that's gonna give us this, but it's a bit loud and the noise lasts a bit too long, 
But instead of shortening things up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the tension of the curve a bit. I think that sounds pretty nice. And so that is the basics of our kick drum. And I'm gonna go ahead and resample that out. So you can see we've got a nice short transient and a long subby body compared to that transient. And I think that looks pretty good. So I think we're ready to start post-processing this guy. So let's start doing some post-processing. We're gonna go over to the effects tab now within Vital. And the first thing I'm gonna add is some distortion. And I like the hard clipper for kick drums. And I'm just gonna turn up the drive maybe three quarters of a decibel. So maybe 0.75 dB. And we'll give that a listen. Now it's a little bit much for me, so I'm gonna drag the mix down to about 50%. So now it's more subtle. Um, you can barely hear it in there, but it is there. And then I'm gonna add some EQ. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the high pass and I'm gonna drag this to around 20 Hertz. And this isn't gonna make a huge change in our sound, but what this is gonna do is cut out all the super low frequencies that we really just don't need to be there that would otherwise be robbing energy from our kick. So we're gonna go ahead and do something like that. And then I'm gonna also add a low pass to the high end, and we're gonna set that somewhere around 12,000. And then I'm gonna boost the resonance a bit, just to bring out more of the click. And then I'm gonna use the uh, middle EQ band with a little bit lower resonance to kind of bring out more of those highs. I think something like that sounds nice. And lastly, we're gonna add a filter. Now what I like to do in the with the filters inside of Vital is I'll set the resonance all the way down and I'll set the cutoff all the way up and then I will just use them to add some drive to my signal. They're not actually changing the sound if we listen. But if we add drive, now we're starting to get a little bit of warmth. And so if I resample this out, you can see that we've added some distortion to our signal. And so now we can adjust the volume and make our kick nice and loud, making sure not to clip the signal, but coming up just under zero. Now we can see we've got a pretty nice looking kick just straight out of Vital. So that's it for kick drums and Vital. Don't forget to check out Horizon Drums. It's our newest dubstep drum pack. We just released it and it's really awesome. Go check it out. And while you're checking that out, don't forget to grab this free Vital preset. It's on our free downloads page at the very bottom. If you like this video, it would really mean a lot to me if you left a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want more tutorials and production-related content. I'm Alan from Black Lotus Audio, and I will see you guys later.